Hashtag subscribe to New York Times. I just wanted to get that out of the way before we got started. Because that way, if anybody calls us a hate crime, you know who to blame. Something that we should all take away from this experience is that uh, before you do anything bad, just evoke somebody's name, because as soon as you do that, the blame is off your shoulders and it's right on to them. So now, why don't we get into it? Greetings! I'm Happy Bartle, not actual member of Pew News, but I like to give opinion. New Zealand shooter, that's what we're here talking about today. Why? Because over the weekend, Twitter just descended into toxicity. You'd think it, you'd think at some point the people of Tumblr the you'd think at some point the people of Twitter would run out of their toxic levels. They have no energy left to do any of this whining, but they apparently have an unending supply of grievances and envy. What am I talking about? So media tumblerias and Twitter check marks who wear the blue check mark like an armband jumped with envy to blame PewDiePie for the shooting that took place in New Zealand last weekend where a man went into two mosques and killed about 50 people. And why would they blame him? Because before the man went in, he said, subscribe to PewDiePie. Not because he was a fan of PewDiePie, but because he was a meme lord. If you read his manifesto, it's filled with memes. And in his manifesto, he also stated that by doing the things that he was, it would cause an emotional charge from the left, which would cause them to want to ban guns again, censor a certain censor certain people from the internet, and so on. PewDiePie was a great target because of his polarization and the size of his fan base. If you go after PewDiePie to censor it, you will also engage his fan base, which will fight against those who want to censor it, and, you've already, and then you'll have bigger cracks, bigger fissures in a cohesive society. That's why he picked PewDiePie, not because he's a fan, but because he wanted you to react emotionally and cause a bigger war. YouTube also put out a tweet, obviously saying prayers and, and stand with you, New Zealand, and their tweet was filled with responses that were, you are to blame for this, you enabled this by having PewDiePie on your platform, excuse me. Can you tell me how exactly YouTube can be held accountable for somebody's actions for, who, for somebody who watches stuff on their platform? Can you give me more information on how this guilt by association works? Because if we're going to play that game, the manifesto actively mentions everything he learned is from the internet. So his internet provider actually is more complicit than YouTube. The earth is more complicit than YouTube because the earth and plants provided him with air. Hashtag kill all trees, right? And what I really, really, really don't understand is this eagerness to jump on oh one person said subscribe to PewDiePie before they went and committed something and so now everybody who's involved in this is bad however here is a list of terrorist attacks that just took place in western countries up to mid 2017 um at the start of every one of those terrorist attacks the attacker said Allah Akbar how come we cannot blame and hold accountable every Muslim after these attacks were all Allah Akbar prefaced, but now we're going to hold YouTube accountable, Trump accountable, all right wingers accountable, PewDiePie's fans accountable, PewDiePie accountable. How does this work exactly? And let's not pretend the Islamic attack have not been in the scale that this mosque attack was. Oh no, remember the Nice attacks? 84 killed. More than a hundred injured on Bastille Day in France. And I don't remember anybody saying, oh, we need to hold all Muslims accountable. We need to shut down every mosque because they said Allah Akbar because they were Muslims. No, we heard hashtag I'm with Nice, hashtag not all Muslims. And we heard more about being there for the Muslims because of the backlash than we did about being there for the people of Nice. Why all of a sudden does it matter what somebody prefaces the work with and that it now represents the entirety of the group? Because it's a white guy. 
Why is it that we can't hold every Muslim accountable for just the attack in Nice? But we can hold accountable 90 plus million people and a bunch of uh, completely unrelated people and a bunch of unrelated companies accountable for a crazy person, for a crazy angry person. I don't really understand. Can you explain this one to me? Oh, and uh, let's not forget this beautiful, lovely piece of literature from the Islamic State in 2016. Quote, The French must die by the thousands toward the paradise that is the path. Come, brother, let's go to paradise. Our women are waiting for us there with angels as servants. You will have a palace, a winged horse of gold and rubies with a little rocket launcher. You can easily get one of them. You do something like that in the name of D Dala, the Islamic State, and France will be traumatized for a century. So you've got the Islamic State saying, go kill the French people and you'll be rewarded. And we can't hold all Muslims accountable for that. However, one person says something who's white, and now you can hold an entire fan base accountable and call for their banning? Are you for real? The best thing to come out of this, I think, in the last couple of days is that Felix is not the only one being blamed for this thing, is they are going after, these crazy people are going after anybody that they can. They went after Trump and said that Trump is to blame. New Zealand's came out and said they're going to make their gun laws stricter, despite them already being some of the strictest in the world. I don't know what they're going to do, but you really can't legislate out evil, so good luck trying. All you're going to do is endanger your innocent people, and eventually, you may turn into an island of criminals. Funny enough, within 24 hours of the news cycle happening, Chelsea Clinton became the next person blamed for why the attack in New Zealand happened. And why that? Because she dared to criticize Ilan Omar, a congresswoman from Minnesota, because if you criticize a Muslim, apparently that's encouraging violence against Muslims. No, it's not. Anybody that's arguing you can't criticize a Muslim is trying to create an unofficial blasphemy law while they're working on creating legitimate blasphemy laws. So no, if being criticized is enough to make you feel like you're going to be physically attacked, then I guess you better stop attacking white men with all of your headlines. You want me to show you what radicalizes people? I'll show you what radicalizes people, and it's not a YouTuber making jokes on the internet. Watch these graphics. The most disturbing thing of all is this push for censorship, because censorship never actually fixes anything. Look, if there is a problem, there are two ways to deal with that problem. In every single instance, if it's interpersonal, if it's national, if it's international, there are two ways in which you can work out a problem, and those two ways are talking it out or with violence. When you disable conversation, you make it so violence is the only answer. So every time you push to have somebody deplatformed, somebody banned because you don't like what they say, then you are pushing them towards an act of violence. You're supporting the unofficial cultural standard that might makes right. So as long as you're the strongest, it's your way goes. So if you ban somebody because you don't like what they say, you're using your might to stamp out somebody else. But that also, you're not just stamping them out. You're telling them, well, if you can get more powerful than me, then you can stamp me out. So what do you think is going to happen? If you can't have conversation and everything is about being the strongest so you can force your will on somebody else, what do you think is going to happen? That's right, they're going to come back right at you with violence to force you into submission. What we need is more conversation. What we need is the encouragement of people to talk even if it's offensive. And if you don't like the offense, then you personally choose to not be a part of that conversation. Just because a conversation is being had, it doesn't mean you have to be a part of it. I see plenty of conversations that I don't want to be a part of, so I just don't get involved. Enabling a conversation is the way to disarm radicalization because you can test ideas, you can show understanding, you can show compassion. What we risk when we have no conversation is we demonize people and we say, there's nothing there's nothing more to you other than you're evil. And once you dehumanize somebody, you can do anything to them. We have to have conversation. We have to be willing to recognize other people's plights, other people's worries, and other people's perspectives. And this goes for everyone. People can only take it for so long when you say, sit down, shut up. Your position doesn't matter. Because once you make them feel helpless, 
once you back them into a corner and say your words don't matter, you can't change anything, and they feel helpless, then they're going to take action because words didn't work. If we want to create peace, if we want to create understanding, then we have to offer compassion to everybody. Now, this might be illegal in your country, so don't do it if that is the, uh, so do this at your own risk. But I urge you to read the manifesto on your own. The media is not telling you what it says, they're telling you the parts that they like and clipping out the rest. He wanted to cause chaos. He wanted to pit sides against each other. He wanted to light the match on both sides so it gets to the center faster. And when you respond emotionally, that's what happens. Stop trusting the media to have your best interest at heart. If there's no drama, they don't make money. How often do you see the media push stories about good things happening? They don't, because it doesn't sell copy. They would rather make up 10 bad stories than tell one good one, because the 10 bad stories will make them so much more money. And uh, why did New York Times get the shout out at the start of this video? I would like to bring your attention to Mr. David Kirkpatrick, who wrote an article I'll link in the description below, but he purposefully said, the creator of PewDiePie, Felix Shelberg, posted on Twitter that he was sickened by the association and in the process innovatively helped publicize the killing. Now, don't the media kind of publicize these sorts of things by writing about them every day? Hmm. It's almost like they don't want anybody else talking about it because they want to be the ones to sell it so that they can choose what you know. Hmm. It's almost like they want to create outrage. Like they want to demonize somebody. Because it'll create more outrage. Which will get more clicks. Which will make more money. But I'm just Hoppy Parlo. What do I know? As long as we continue down this path where we lack compassion, specifically for people because of their skin color, and I'm talking about you people who hate whites because they're white, as long as we continue down this path of censorship where we cut out people's tongues because we don't like what they say or we don't like their ideas or we just don't think they're funny or we are are jealous and we don't want them to get any bigger it's only going to get worse this is the meaning of deadly sin people are making up stories and censoring stories for greed they want the money they're too prideful to admit when they're wrong because they don't want to be wrong And they're envious and seek to take down people who are more successful than them because they cannot for the life of themselves understand why somebody like PewDiePie has almost 90 million subscribers. Why isn't that me? I hear the artists and the journos on Twitter saying, because you don't deserve it, okay? Honest people should be elevated because money magnifies your character. And if this is how you act when you have a much smaller platform, you really don't deserve to have a bigger one. They're called the seven deadly sins because if you let them eat you alive, they won't just kill you. They'll kill everything around you. So let's stop covering our ears and demonizing people because they're different. They laugh at something different. They enjoy something different. They have different priorities at the top of their list. And we'll work through it if you don't like bacon, okay? If you look at people who disagree with you as only evil, then you're turning cardboard cutouts into everyone you know to make them easier to punch later. Let's stop. Let's take care of each other. And let's stop trying to destroy each other's lives. For real, though. <laughs> Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. This is Hopi Parallel, and you've just been filled in.